Hey guys, I'm Alex Pierce. Today I'm going to show you my add-on AP360 Cam. To install AP360 Cam, go to Edit, Preferences, Install, navigate to the folder where you have it, and then install AP360. Once you have it installed, you can find it on the sidebar, this in bar, by pushing in. or by clicking this arrow up here and then navigating to the AP Game Tools toolbar. You can pin this tab by pushing right click, pin, or shift, left click. What that does is no matter what tab you go to, AP360 Cam will show up there as well. You can also resize any panels by holding down control and then pushing middle mouse wheel in and dragging up or down. So I'm going to show you a quick demo of me setting up a whole scene to render out several 360 cameras. Now I have my scene in like a dollhouse mode. Shift right click to move the cursor. You can use shift control right mouse for a shortcut. Shift right mouse, the set cursor, shift control right mouse for the shortcut to add a 360 camera. And if I push render region, it'll only re render the echo rectangular. So this location is where my panorama is and you'll see the height is set at 177 which is 510 I can navigate between my cameras by pushing left and right or going to the beginning camera or the end camera if I push G it will move my X and Y but not my Z because I've locked Z location and X rotation Y rotation they're locked so you could rotate here if you wanted to but it's not recommended you could rotate here if you wanted to but it's not recommended the height is important to stay the same for all your cameras if you're doing a realistic scene. And you might, if you want to change this, you can just unlock it or you can change it here. If you want to move this camera, you can push G and move it around. It doesn't move the height. You can hold down X to move on just that axis or Y to move just on the Y axis. or you can push shift right mouse move to cursor it keeps the height and just moves x and y and you can use these as well I've set up this crosshair in the middle to help you with your pan And then you have quick presets here. If you hover over, it'll tell you 1024 by 512, 2048 by 1040, 4096 by 2048, and 8192 by 4096. And these are the samples. Sample size is 16, low, 250, and 1000. Denoise checks use nodes and adds a denoising pass, all in one step. Be careful though, if you have anything set up, it will delete those. And then you can also choose if you want it to be mono or stereo. I'll click mono for now and push render all cameras.
Before I do, I'm going to navigate to my folder. So when I push render all cameras, it's going to create a folder called AP360. And starts rendering the images into here. It will lock up Blender. If you don't want Blender to freeze, or if you don't want it to go to this location, you can render as a normal animation. You can go to the Output tab, go save where the location where you want to save it, set up your settings here, and then just go to Render, Render Animation. And then you can see it preview while it renders. You can also cancel it this way. Okay, let's go ahead and render stereo now. The Render All button overwrites any images in the folder. This can be helpful when you're quickly iterating with preview settings, but just make sure you don't overwrite something accidentally. Stereo will render an over-under image left and right. For now, I'll just stick with mono. So I also have shortcuts to see these. Control right arrow and shift right arrow. Control left and shift left. So control right arrow and it automatically selects the camera for you. And you can use G and X to move on the x-axis, G and Y to move on the y-axis, R and Z to rotate al along the z-axis or pan the camera, Shift right will go to the last camera. Shift left will go to the first camera. Control right will go to the next camera. Control left will go to the previous camera and it'll automatically select it. So again, you can push G and X to move it. RZ to pan. Okay, then I'm going to render in 4K medium quality, mono. I'm going to save because this is going to render over all my other ones. Okay, once it's finished rendering, you can just take, double check. And you should have all of your panoramas rendered. Now you can bring these into the tool of your choice. And you have a perfectly rendered 360 video or 360 still image. And you can Turn this into a video or use it for a virtual tour or whatever you want to do with it. So we'll look a little bit into what this is actually doing. To set up a camera normally, what you have to do is Shift A, Add Camera, and then you can see this camera is not in the right height, so you'd need to go GZ and then up. It's also rotated weird, so rotate uh, X, uh, but that's kind of a weird location here. So 90, 0, 0, and then you would need to go to the camera tab, change the type to panoramic, pan and then the type to echo rectangular. And then if you don't have stereo set up, you can't even change the stereo settings here. So if you want to set up stereo, you have to go to another one of these buttons, which is this one, the output properties one. Scroll down to stereo, 
and then choose stereo 3D and then under output I think it comes in as individual you choose stereo and then top and bottom and then you can choose to do squeezed frame or not but then if you go to move this camera you can accidentally move the the Z value so you have to do shift Z if you don't want to move it on the Z axis and if you want to move this camera you go there shift S selection to cursor but then it resets your height so then you have to do G Z and then where's my height at it's hard to find it and then if you want to render control alt B clears this so you have to do control B to do render region and then you gotta drag over that to, to do that to change the resolution normally you have to go to resolution and then change it here you gotta make sure it's set correctly so if you want to change this for preview you have to come over here and then let's see divided by four divide by four and then you got to go here find this and say I want it to be 32 and then if you want to set up compositing you normally have this you got to do shift a noise put it in there so that saves all those steps another thing that AP 360 cam does is the way you can render as an animation is because it sets up each one of these cameras as a marker and then binds that camera to a frame so that basically each frame the camera changes to a different camera so without AP 360 cam the way you would do this is you would add your camera and set it up of course and then open up a timeline so you go to this button here go to timeline and then you can add a marker go marker add marker but see the camera's not there yet so you have to do what's called a bind camera to marker so bind camera to marker and then you have to do that for your next camera as well so you set up another camera come down here add marker um, set binding and then the other thing you would have to do that AP360 cam does automatically so you can see it sets your in frame your start and your end frame just to where your cameras are so if you were doing this manually you would need to make sure that you set your start and end frames alright that wraps up this video I hope you enjoy AP360 cam